Hello and welcome, this is Roofmonger, and as of the time of this recording, the final DLC characters, Android 17 and Cooler, will be out very shortly, and I guess that's it for this game, we're just done. Uh, these are the last characters that we know are coming out, so after that, the game's done, and you know, hey, I'll turn off the lights when I leave, because that's it for this game, and uh, there ain't no more coming. Ah, we all know this ain't true, right? This is, Obviously, there will be a Season 2. Now, what form will this Season 2 take? That's kind of the premise of this video. That's kind of just speculation. I cannot confirm anything. This is all just on my thought process going forward. But uh, still, we gotta look about what has happened in the past and what's gonna happen going forward to how this might take place. Now, obviously, Cooler and 17, they gotta come out first before anything else. And will there be a Season 2 shortly thereafter? No, almost certainly not. It'll probably be like an early next year kind of thing. At least. That's what I'm thinking. And what shape will it take? Well, we'll break it down to these couple basic categories. The shapes it'll take are new characters, come on, we all know, new stages, new gameplay systems, uh, obviously character rebalances in the, the pipe because that's how it always works. And let's just kind of look at these individually. So there can't be a new season of a fighting game without new characters. That's pretty much gone dry, right? Uh, so once we have Cooler and 17, who knows how many new characters will be added and how they'll be added. One thing to kind of keep in mind is what's the way they're going to add them? Is it going to be like the Street Fighter style where they'll say be anywhere from six, eight new characters over the course of the year? Or will it be a new full package and you'll get anywhere from, you know, two to ten characters off the bat and then they'll do another season of characters on top of that? Who knows? Uh, one thing that stands the reason, though, uh, the UI will have to be redone. Uh, as you can see here, this is the edge of the UI as it stands. And we're going to have room for Cooler here and 17 over here. And that's about it. There's not really any more room. So the UI as it stands will have to be changed. And who's going to be added? Well, you got to think, you know, what's big in Dragon Ball Super right now and what's big in Dragon Ball Culture right now. And uh, the tournament power characters are kind of a lock. So Jiren, 100%. Any, I don't think anyone can argue Jiren's inclusion. Uh, Toppo, almost certainly, especially because you can make him a cool stance character, like, uh, just like Frieza. He's normal form, and then you burn whatever many bars, and it's God of Destruction Toppo. That makes sense to me. I don't know. Stands reason, right? And then you got to think the girls, Kale and Caulifla, and also Kefla, right? Is it just going to be Kefla? Is it going to be Kale and Caulifla? Or is it going to be all three? Who knows? I don't know myself. But uh, their exclusion would definitely cause, I think, a small-scale riot. I know some people don't like them, but... Uh, the game's definitely hurting for female characters, and then here's three potential options for female characters, and, you know, you kind of got to go with it. And besides that, you know, you got, like, a Ribrianne, even though I know a lot of people don't like her, she's got a lot of moves, right? She can definitely uh, be a potential candidate. Uh, then we have people like Kaba, I'm not too crazy about him, but hey, he's a character. Uh, we obviously have the Broly movie coming up, right? Uh, will the Broly movie... Uh, warrant a new version of Broly. We already got like 400 Gokus, so hey, why not a second Broly, right? Uh, it'd probably sell pretty well, especially uh, if it's not too long after the movie. And then you gotta have a couple odd characters, right? Uh, will there be a Gogeta? You know, how about Turles? That's right, everyone of my race can become a giant gorilla. You know, everybody loves Turles, and Turles would just be another Goku to the roster. But yeah, long story short, we definitely need more characters. That's pretty much a given. Uh, the only thing is, will we get a bunch up front and then a little bit later, or will it be kind of drip-fed through the year like some other fighting games do it? Now, moving on to stages. Now, we do know with uh, the Cooler and Android 17 patch, we are also getting a free stage, a space stage, which has uh, been described as the eSports stage, and honestly, I guess that's not too far from the truth. Uh, very similar to, say, how Street Fighter V would do a style stage for the Capcom Pro Tour, and it'll display info and, like, a flag and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but what stages will we add? Because there's a lot of key locations in Dragon Ball that are not in this game. Uh, obviously, uh, the Lookout is not in the game. Uh, Hyperbolic chain, uh, Time Chamber is not in the game. Roshi's House is not in the game. And I can go on. There's a lot of things. Obviously, Tournament Power as well itself. Like, that's a no-brainer, no right? Uh, stages are obviously not gameplay. You know, a lot of people seem to like playing on the featureless training mode uh, grid in a lot of fighting games. I personally hate it. I love the flavor of stages. And in that, uh, we got a long way to go because uh, let alone, you know, say whatever's going to be in the Broly movie, whatever's coming up in the uh, upcoming Return of Dragon Ball Super, whenever that happens, there's a lot of happening that we can work with. And uh, there's so many possible stages that just have yet to appear. 
So with stuff like the lookout, stuff like uh, Roshi's house, like these are to me must includes, let alone you know tournament power and whatever else stuff going forward. Now with every new major revision of a fighting game, there is basically always system level changes. So not necessarily core changes to the character themselves, although we'll talk about that. But just how does the game work anymore, you know? Uh, here's a new feature that never existed before. Like, say, let's use uh, Ultra Street Fighter 4, for example, right? Uh, that introduced the red focus attack. And while it wasn't a defining system, it certainly did, you know, change the gameplay around, uh, added new optimal bread and butter combos to certain characters, and became a staple, right? So what are the new things that we could add to this? Now, everyone's going to have their own ideas, right? And everyone's going to be biased in their own ideas. Like me, I am much more biased towards defense, so I want to see better defensive options. Now, obviously, like one thing I would enjoy seeing is push block. Now, we obviously can't have traditional Marvel-style push block because it'd be way too strong for this game. But uh, maybe we do it the Injustice way. Injustice, you have push block for a bar. If you're willing to lose a bar, you can get a push block. And considering bar is the lifeblood of this game, I think maybe that's a fair trade. Uh, you know, that's my uh, opinion on the matter. Obviously, yours it can differ. Uh, but yeah, this is the most up in the air because who knows what they're really going to do because uh, everyone can have 100 ideas and maybe one of those darts actually hits the board, right? So I don't know what it can be. I know things I would like to see. I'd like to see Homing Dash maybe start up two or three frames slower than it currently does. It can still keep its uh, properties of like, you know, beating weak projectiles on the, the same frame, but just from start to go, maybe a little bit slower. I would also like to see the deflect uh, window just be a little more active. The total duration of frames are remaining the same, but the active window just a little bit longer. But once again, this is me as a defensive player mindset. So uh, I think more on this kind of thing that I would like to see in the game versus some people like to see maybe more offensive options, right? I'm sure there's someone out there who would like to see uh, you get a full combo off uh, the generic overhead without using assist. I wouldn't agree with that personally, but you know, obviously someone might have that idea. So we're all gonna have our biases. So this one is just the most wait and see. Uh, but for me, since this is my video, my opinions are the most right and these changes have to happen. And of course, I couldn't end this segment without saying the biggest change that I don't think anybody's going to argue with for system ch wide changes anyways, is that there needs to be more than the one assist for each character. Uh, maybe not go so crazy as like Skullgirls where you can like choose literally any button to be an assist, but I think most people will at least appreciate a second assist slot. So a lot of characters in the game here simply don't see play because, you know, their assists are not amazing like Frieza. Uh, his assist is certainly very good in specific situations, but, you know, it has the big downside of the uh, minimum distance in travel and, uh, you know, Krillin, oh, Lord knows what, everything we could say about Krillin, right? Uh, Krillin can just simply choose a beam assist, which he does have as a special move already, so it's not asking for, you know, the moon, right? If he could simply have a beam assist, then all of a sudden his usage would skyrocket and I don't think anybody would complain. Now, with a full new revision of the game, obviously will come balance changes as well. Every character will get some tweaks, you know, it'll just be like any given balance patch. However, with a whole new version of the game, right, this is a version I'd probably repackage and put a new disc with the whole new name, which will probably be Super Dragon Ball Fighters or something akin to that. Uh, on top of the balance changes comes the potential for just, hey, new moves. And certain people will benefit a lot more than others, right? Uh, does Cell need new moves? Uh, not really. Cell's kind of got everything he needs, right? And that's kind of the, one of the big attractions of the character. Uh, Beerus, though, he's a character that, you know, this game doesn't treat very well, let's be honest, right? Uh, and when you come down to the strict thing of balance, where you got to tweak numbers, tweak frames, uh, that might do him a little disservice because you can easily over tweak something when it could just simply be hey Here's a new move for Beerus and Lord knows what it could possibly be right But here's a new move for Beerus and this really helps fill the gap This fills the blank this new move kind of rounds out his arsenal and makes him a much better character, right? It's just, It just could be as cut and dry as that just a new move could be exactly what the doctor ordered and this obviously applies to everybody in the cast, right? Uh, new moves tweaking of old moves all that that's uh, just kind of how it works part and parcel with the whole uh, new version of a fighting game experience. And there you have it. So just some thoughts on the matter. Obviously anyone saying they know what season two is going to be off the bat right now, uh, probably someone you shouldn't trust. <laughs> so for me, hey, all I'm doing is speculating. I don't know for sure. Uh, what I can speculate, you know, 
is they'll retitle the game. It'll probably be Super Dragon Ball Fighters because, hey, you know, that makes a lot of sense, right? Uh, they'll probably repackage the game, you know, so you can buy the new disc. It'll have all the characters of Season 1 DLC already built into the game, plus, you know, whatever changes, and just go from there. Now, one thing, this is the final thing, and I know it's not going to happen, even though this is the thing that should happen the most, is they need to change the netcode. Now, is this game unplayable online? No. But do we got to suffer through it sometimes? Yeah, we do. And we all know this, right? Uh, the one sad, uh, stubborn thing about Arc System Works is they really aggressively are trying to fight back against uh, rollback netcode. And they have been for a long time. And honestly, it's not really acceptable, but what can we do about it? Uh, Mortal Kombat X did listen to its fans. And a year into the game's lifespan, they redid everything about the netcode and changed the rollback or changed to rollback netcode from the delay based netcode they had. And you know what? Worked out amazing. MKX Online became a dream after that, after being, you know, somewhat difficult at times to work with. Now, we can only hope the same for this game. Uh, as far as delay based netcode comes, you know, this isn't the worst it's ever been, sure, but uh, delay based netcode is never as good as rollback netcode. I can only hope uh, one day they will listen to the fans. And yeah, do I expect it though? No, honestly, I don't. But uh, as long as it is delay based netcode, you will always hear me voice my opinion that Arc System Work has to step up and meet the demands of the fans of Europe and North America because, you know, our internet's not as good as it is in Asia and uh, we got a lot more landmass to travel through. And so rollback is much more definitively better for our situation. Anyways, that's me rambling about that. So yeah. Anyways, uh, that's it for this video, so thank you very much for watching. I hope this video has found you well. Go out and play some Dragon Ball.